when you talk about this practice on Tonglen, which is giving out happiness and taking in suffering, um, but you discuss uh, a, a great deal about the philosophical underpinning of this practice, and you touch on Buddha nature, and in fact, uh, you write, uh, who we truly are is luminosity, clarity, and emptiness. Who we truly are is the inseparable union of wisdom and love. So um, it seems the, the tradition of Tonglen from Niguma is very deeply embedded in the theory or philosophy of Buddha nature. Um, can you elaborate a bit on how uh, this is? Yes, I think <clears throat> the extraordinary Tonglen of Naguma is so powerful, especially for right now, because it really focuses first on starting the Tonglen from bringing forth and resting in our own Buddha nature before you start the Tonglen. Mm -hmm. And this really brings so much um, emotion to me because let me back up a little bit first, Kempo Lada, say that I feel very strongly that it's a teacher's role and duty to help bring forth our, our students' Buddha nature. I think what I felt from my teachers was when I didn't believe in myself at all, when I couldn't contact my own Buddha nature, I felt that my teachers believed in me and they mirrored to me my own Buddha nature. Mm. They saw my own Buddha nature in me and they mirrored that to me. Through seeing it in me, they, they helped me feel that. And I think that that is what a good teacher does, whether they're Buddhist, Christian, Sufi, Hindu, Jewish, you know, Native American, a shamanistic, whoever they are, a good spiritual teacher sees the pure being, the true wisdom and love in their student and mirrors that back to them. They see the actual, you know, true nature in their student and reflects that to them. Marrying them back is a psychological term, but we could say, you know, shows that back to them, reflects that back to them. And I think this, I experience this from all my great teachers, six, you know, Kala Rinpoche, 16th Karmapa, Jangan Kontro Rinpoche, Dujum Rinpoche, Dingo Kensi, mm -hmm. Dalai Lama, you know, Kempo Sultram, Boka Rinpoche. Situ Rinpoche, all of my great teachers, I feel, I felt that and feel that to this day, whether they're embodied or not embodied on the Nirmanakaya, on the human plane. And I really feel this is the primary role of a teacher to do this, as well as speaking the words and teaching the Dharma. And I think mm -hmm. it's through this process that's a very one-to-one -one direct transmission, as well as in a room of students that it's how the student comes to have faith in themselves and in their own true nature. And then in the teachings, we do the practices as a student that, you know, and we learn the Dharma that helps us to peel away the layers of the onion that are keeping us from directly experiencing that, as you were mentioning earlier. And then in Naguma's Tonglen, <clears throat> You focus by first um, calling on Chenrezig Avalokiteshvara, you know, who is the embodiment of awakened love and compassion, you know, awakened in that he is an awakened bodhisattva, you know, the embodiment of all wisdom. And then praying to him that we can embody awakened love you know, like that, like he does, and having him dissolve into ourselves and then reside in our heart chakra. And this helps us to get in touch with, with that in ourself, because we imagine him in our heart, we imagine that the awakened love of all the Buddhas is in our heart. And we imagine that the Vajra-like nature of awakened love that is deathless, that is the true nature of um, 
who we are. So we imagine that this Buddha nature is appearing like a, a, a Vajra, inseparable wisdom and awakened love in our hearts. And you know what Vajrayana practice does, as you know, is we imagine ourselves into the actuality. So by imagining that Buddha nature is there, we slowly mm -hmm. over time begin to actually get in touch with the reality that it is there. And the heart chakra, for people who aren't aware of Vajrayana practice who are listening to this, the heart chakra is the easiest gateway into Buddha nature. It's, it's like, it is, it is the gateway for us. That's mm -hmm. the easiest way to access it. It's not, you know, Buddha nature is everywhere, but it's easiest to tap into it through the heart chakra. So in Vajrayana practice, that's, it's used as a gateway. So Naguma has us imagine this crystal uh, luminous, of course, it's empty, but imagined as a crystal Vajra of light there. And then we anchor in that and through a series of meditations, we open to feeling our Buddha nature there as this Vajra of light, as the essence of Chen Rezi, awakened love, before we start the Tonglen. And so that when we're breathing in the suffering, it's, we're feeling that all the Buddha's love and compassion, not just our own, our own, you know, self hampered by egos, love and compassion is transforming the suffering, but all the awakened love of the Buddhas is transforming the suffering. And then this lightning bolt goes out from the Vajra that has transformed the suffering and, and the joy and the love all goes into the person. So I think this was, you know, obviously she was called a wisdom dakini, a fully awakened dakini in human form. And I think this is very powerful for people nowadays to help. And I found that for me, it helped hugely to help me get in touch with my Buddha nature, which had been, you know, even though I had that experience at three, it got completely clouded over. I got completely out of touch with it, totally was immersed in my own shadow material. And you know, it took a long time to help uncover that through my guru's blessing, you know, so that practice, I feel, is one of the jewels of the Shampa teachings. Mm -hmm.